Hi there, and let's get right to it. Rotoscoping is something that's frequently employed in the visual effects and animation industries in which a subject or an object is followed frame by frame. So far, we've been using windows together with a tracking tool in order to follow something across the screen. But with rudimentary shapes like circles and squares, we're not able to get the subject perfectly selected. What that means from a visual effects point of view is that what we've been incorporating so far have been garbage mats. These are very rough outlines of an element that we want. A rotoscope will trace the subject perfectly. There's a couple of reasons why we might want that level of precision. First of all, the qualifier tool does not always succeed in grabbing the exact colors of the element that we want. Also, the object that you want to select might sometimes have a really wide range of colors, a lot of which match the colors in the background. So if you're trying to isolate something and grade it independently, or perhaps more pertinently, if you're compositing visual effects into a scene and you want to place something behind your character, you're going to need that exact cutout. The good news is that we can hurry this process up at least a little bit using the windows and the tracker like we've been doing so far. Now, the bad news is that it still is rotoscoping. If you've ever done it before, you'll know that it's a fairly tedious process in which you have to animate the points of a mask frame by frame. So let's try to rotoscope our actor's face. I've already dropped a simple ellipse on him. I'm going to make sure I'm on the first frame. And now I'm going to track the footage forward. When that's complete, I'm going to go back into my window palette and with the ellipse selected, I'm going to convert it to a bezier shape. That's going to generate a new window in the palette using the shape that I'd already drawn. Before I start rotoscoping, I'm going to click on my ellipse, which has now been turned off, and copy the track data. I can then go back into my power curve and paste the data. So now it's an exact copy of this ellipse. I can then zoom into my viewer and I'll close the clips to give myself more precision. And I can start moving the points around to fit my character. I'm not going to be as precise as I normally am, but we don't want this video to take 45 minutes. So let's say that's that. I'm going to click over to the tracker palette, click on the word frame, and now I'm going to click on the window to drop off a keyframe, going back in time, and when I see my shape starting to lose its position and its match with his face, I'm just going to click on it and drag the points around to match them a bit more. So it's not like classic rotoscoping in which you have to do a lot of stuff manually. A lot of it is done for you, which is wonderful. And if you've ever animated mask paths in After Effects, you're going to find that this is a similar process. So that's pretty much what rotoscoping is and how it works. This was a fairly basic shape, but that's generally how you want to stick to it. If I had to track his entire body, I would have dedicated power curves for each limb, his torso, and his head to make the animation simpler for myself. So if I add another one, and I'll label this head, and then I can copy the track data and paste it onto the next layer. And I could draw it around his torso, I guess. We could start with that. And the neat thing about it is with the tracking data applied, the torso will already be more or less moving where it's supposed to be. But of course, it will require quite a few changes inside of frame mode to ensure that it stays uh, around his upper body. If you're used to rotoscope workflows and you're watching these tutorials so that you can learn how to do them inside of DaVinci Resolve, I would like to recommend that before you make any rotoscopes that you check out if any of the other options would work better for you first. So before you even consider rotoscoping, first check out the qualifier in HSL and 3D mode. Next, check out using a garbage mat and one of the HSL curves. So really exhaust all your avenues because that will be the most time-consuming option. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.